All right, well, let, let's get started. All right, good uh, morning, everyone. My name is Ron Dagdag. Um, today, I will be talking about anomaly detection for JavaScript. I'm wearing my Spider-Man sensors, <laughs> my Spider-Man shirt today, and we're talking about developing Spidey senses, anomaly detection for JavaScript. Okay, let's see if it, this one is again. So my clicker isn't, for some reason. Here we go. Spidey senses, anyone can uh, define who it is? Or, of course, anyone familiar with Spider-Man? Yes, hopefully that's what got you interested in getting to this talk. I. One, one good tip, whenever you write Spider-Man, there is a dash. A lot of people doesn't see that, but there's always a dash between spider and man. Uh, so what is spidey sense? Uh, spidey sense is that tingling sensation uh, on the back of Peter Parker. Peter Parker is the guy that, uh, you know, the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, right? Uh, th that have that allows him the ability to sense if there's danger that's coming around, right? It allows Spider-Man to be able to detect any evil or increases um, if it's, to help him navigate if it's in, impaired or de develop, uh, discover secret passages, yada, yada, yada. And, and you know, it, it, it lets him know, you know, from one building to the other to be able to, to know where to have his spider web, right? So it's innately part of Spider-Man. And the, the critical part of it, if you've noticed the last one, because on my plane all the way here, they have the Spider-Man multiverse or No Way Home. Before there's a danger that's happening to Aunt May, they, he kind of instinctively know that you know, something's going to go on. Of course, uh, if you're afraid of spiders, uh, close your eyes, because the real spider sense is, is this one. And they, uh, spiders have the spidey sense because of these um, hyper awareness where it had this long, thin hairs. And every time I look at spider, it gives me that, you know, that feeling because of those small little hairs. It's called trichobothria. And those, that's what the spider sense is, where it detects the low level vibration through their web, uh, even sound, it can detect sound, and uh, it can detect um, insects moving up to three meters away. So it's, um, spiders are, are amazing. It's, it's very interesting. And of course, if you're a new web developers, any new web developers here? And sometimes it feels like that, where you're trying to cast your, your web and nothing's coming out, nothing's working, and then suddenly it started to, to tick. Right. So what is spidey sense? Uh, for us humans, spidey sense is that gut feel, that vibe, that feeling and intuition that helps us discover blind spots. It's, if you're a new developer, it's the, the battle scars that you learned from the past, that's kind of like, this project is kind of like, you know, it may, may work, may not work, those kind of things is what the different lessons that we've learned. So today, we'll be talking about anomaly detection and anomaly detection, um, what it is, and how it kind of, it's, for me, it's kind of like the spidey senses in, 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 in that term. And we'll talk about the time series anomaly detection We'll do a little bit of demo, and then some takeaways. All right, ready? Anomaly detection. It's the, sometimes it is called uh, outlier, uh, where it would, it's identifying unexpected items in a series of events in your data set, which is different from normal. The assumptions are, it very rarely occur, doesn't happen all the time, uh, and uh, their features is different from normal instance, instances significantly. Most likely everyone uh, heard about the pandemic. That's kind of like an outlier, right? It's those weird uh, 
that's not the usual. Of course, now we're going through that new norm, and hopefully the new norm is better. So what we're trying to do here is you have your input data stream, you have your data, and your data may have good data and some bad data, like in this case, defective. I misspelled defective over there. <laughs> so it is really defective. And then you go through this uh, uh, you know, decision, right? Is this data anomalous or not? And of course, sometimes you would, you know, you would uh, determine that it is anomalous. Sometimes you would determine that it's not anomalous, right? That it's, that's not an outlier. So, and of course, if it's, you know, have you heard of the uh, phrase needle in a haystack? Of course, if the needle is that big, yeah, it's easy to find. But usually, anomalous data is not easy to find. So there are three techniques on how you would do this. And most likely, you're doing this already. One is rule-based systems, statistical techniques, and then machine learning. Rule-based systems is when, most likely, you've done it in your program where you specify cer certain rules or threshold that you assign the limit. So for example, you have a stream of data. You say, if it's more than this certain threshold, then it is out of the ordinary. Um, the, on rule-based system, the uh, disadvantage of it is you need experience, uh, you, know, you need some experience to know which one is the common anomalies or the known anomalies. And it does not easily detect or adapt to changes in your data stream. So they, let's say today you're collecting data. Well, think about it, like for example, there's, there's uh, you're trying to detect sales, right? Your sales data, and certain times of the day, you know it's, it's a certain number of sales versus a certain time of the year versus you know, at nighttime, those kind of things. So it needs an expert in order to know, uh, and, and, but it does not adapt because if certain period, suddenly you have more customers than those kind. Of. And it does require some labeling, meaning the expert have to say, this is anomalous, this is not anomalous, and then you can specify uh, in your uh, program to say that that is the data. There's also statistical techniques uh, to, um, to be able to detect anomalies. Or, one is uh, you flag the data points where you specify, sometimes when you calculate the average or the median, the mean, the quantiles, that's one way you can specify, hey, that is out of the ordinary because it's too far from the average, that kind of thing, or uh, rolling average or moving averages. So if you think about the stock market and when they're doing their charts and then identifying those moving averages, you're trying to detect those anomalies. Um, for sensors, sometimes they would use Kalman filter, a filter that would, uh, that would sometimes it's called low, low pass filter to, you know, to, to throw out all the anomalies on your data set. The advantage of using statistical technique is there is a formula. You can say, okay, if the average data is this or the moving average is this, anything outside of that, you know, it's, it's, it's an anomaly. Sometimes it's better, you know, whenever you're, you're doing this technique, it's interpretable because of the formula, and then it's also easier to explain it to someone uh, rather than machine learning method. So for the machine learning method, you know, there are few, a lot of ways in how you would, you would do uh, anomaly detection. Sometimes you do supervised learning, sometimes it's unsupervised learning and self-supervised. -su Supervised means you're giving it a bunch of examples and training uh, a model uh, in order to, you know, to detect anomaly. Unsupervised learning, that's when you're trying to do uh, sometimes typically called k-means or clustering. And then self-supervised learning is uh, the combination of both sometimes unsupervised and, unsu and su supervised learning. So sometimes when you're trying to detect these, it could be density-based, so looking at this value right there. These are 
good data, this is bad data, right? So it's out of the cluster. So that's one way you can do anomaly detection. Uh, so how far is density? Sometimes it's clustering where you, you're clustering around your data. Sometimes it's Gaussian distribution. So you calculate where are the normal is and anything outside of that normal, you specify, hey, that's, that is an anomaly or an outlier. Sometimes you split up your data into two, right? Where you, this one right here might be uh, anomalous, right? Anything below that line is not uh, an anomaly. So what I'm trying to get out here is there's lots of research about this and different techniques and how you would detect anomaly, but we're trying to find a simpler way to do this, right? Because uh, we're not data scientists here, and also we're not mathematicians. So what's the simplest one in, in our world, in the world of JavaScript, okay? So we'll show a little bit of demo here. So I found out that there is a library, uh, NPM install, called uh, Stats Analysis. And the Stats Analysis one, and what I'm doing here is um, I'm, I have a Python notebook, and this Python notebook uh, runs TypeScript uh, as its kernel, so I can execute JavaScript code line by line and show you the example. So it's a good way to kind of uh, go through and execute uh, some of commands and then give you the results. So like in this case, um, let me try to connect there. I'm on the wrong screen right there. So like in this case, it says stat anal analysis is what I used. And then I, cl I click this run and I have, let's say this is my data set and I wanna filter out anything from that filter set, filtered from that data, uh, an anomaly. So in this case, I, I say stats that filter outliers and now it, it ruled out that 25, 15 and 25 is an outlier because it's not close to the other numbers around it. Any questions so far on what I'm talk, talking about? So that's what we're trying to identify. So we have a data set, and let's say from this data set, what is the outlier, and take it out or identify it. Okay. Time series data. Anyone familiar with time series data? Most likely you used it every day. If you have logs, you've used it. Because anything that's, uh, if, you, if you work, you know, if you have your retirement account in the stock market, most likely you'll see all these charts and data set, right? Sales data is a good example of a data, uh, of a time series data, anything from, from IoT devices, the sensors that you're receiving, it's the data points indexed in, in time order, right? As you receive the data, you record it, and then that's, that's the value. So anything with the timestamp. Of course, Internet of Things, that is the one I really uh, enjoyed working, and if there's problem within your IoT data, it feels something like this. You're on loop trying to figure out, because the data stream is fast, and you're trying to identify where, uh, where it's wrong. So time series anomaly types, there's outlier, spike, and level shift, pattern changes, and seasonality. We'll go through each one of the anomaly types. Outlier looks something like this. You have your data set in a time series, right? There's your x axis is time, and then your the value that you receive, and, and it, this is an outlier. That's obvious. You know, it's, and detecting that in your in your code, you know, in your in your application, sometimes can get tricky. But that's how you want it. Spike and level shift. Notice how it comes from you know the data that you're receiving, typically in this, and then suddenly shift up, or sometimes it shifted down. So identifying those can be can get tricky. Pattern changes. This is a good example when you're watering your lawn, you have your hose, 
water is spitting out and someone stepped on it or there's a kink and all the water uh, pressure is lower, that is one way you can, there is a pattern change, yeah, right? And then, of course, we have to think about seasonality whenever we do this, right? Around certain time of the year, I guess this time of the year, it's kind of winter, this winter sales, uh, end of the year sales, right? And then, you know, there's more sales or, you know, they're trying to do discounts. So there's the identifying certain patterns around usage or certain patterns around uh, sales can you you might need to uh, to identify seasonality depending on that time of the year or time time of the day. There's also um, a concept of univariate and multivariate in anomaly detection. Univariate that's what we were talking about. You know where you have your your time series data and then you have just have a value meaning. Let's say if this is sales, right? Sales data. But multivariate is you're looking at 10 sensors or 15 items, and then you're trying to identify pattern on here that would specify that is a multivariate system, right? You have multiple variables, and you're trying to detect based from those that, hey, that's out of the ordinary. So we'll focus on univariate today, and what's the easiest way to do this? Of course, the easiest way is using Azure Cognitive Services. Azure Cognitive Services uh, allows a, a developer that does not have any machine learning expertise. And for us, you know, JavaScript developers, it's just easy enough to call an API. And one of the uh, services that they have there is called Anomaly Detector. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So anomaly detector detects anomalies in real time. You can also do it as a batch. You can adapt and learn, you know, automatically adapt and learns from new data. There's no need for training data on this. It just looks at the history and then identifies that. And you can also fine tune for sensitivity. This is just a REST API. There's no machine learning expertise needed. Like I said, there's no um, labeled training data that you need. And then it just applies the best fitting model. So what it's doing is when you call this API, you pass in your data set, it would identify and classify what's the best algorithm. Like what I was telling, showing you a while ago, there's multiple algorithms on how you would do anomaly detection. In this case, we don't have to worry about it because it automatically detects is the, is the data set you have has some seasonality you use this certain set of algorithms. If it has coarse granularity, meaning the data is, may not be sparse or maybe just fine, fine granularity, they would use this set of data. And it's using a lot of these, and I cannot explain what these anomaly detectors or uh, algorithms are, but it has all these gallery of algorithms uh, that it would automatically use and find. Some limitations of this service is you can only do daily, hourly, up to yearly, so not necessarily per minute. And the minimum is you can send 12 data set, right? Uh, time series data. Uh, this is a sample uh, payload that you send. And then uh, you can specify, based from this data, let's say this is Daily, you specify granularity as daily, and then if you if you specify on your timestamp that it's every five minutes, it you can create the custom interval. There's two ways on how you would call the anomaly detector API. One is through client SDK. The, so if you are a C sharp developer, if you're a Python developer, or Node. Uh, JavaScript, you can you just use the client SDK, which is I'm going to demo later on, and then and then the REST API. Uh, so it will work on any application, even if they don't have any uh, any SDK available. Okay, let's do a demo. But before I do that, are there any questions? Is this interesting? Yeah. Good. 
All right. So here's, here's the simplest demo I can, I can find. When, whenever you're going to create this anomaly detector API, um, of course, you go to Azure, and you specify cognitive serv services. And under these cognitive services, you would select, scroll down, the anomaly detector. Okay, and you would create it, and then it will walk you through um, you know, the subscription that you need, and then the region, and then the pricing tier. The good thing is there's free. So if you just want to try this out, and and uh, try to with your application. There's a free version of these cognitive services that that can do 10 calls per second. So I already made one uh, for our demo today. And when you do that, it would give you an endpoint and then the key. So you would select here and say keys and endpoint, and that's what you would need in order to call the API. So I already have that here, where you had the endpoint and key. This is a, if you just want to try this out, uh, if you go to algoevaluation.azurewebsites.net, uh, they have a sample on how you, you would run this. And this is what it would send to the API. Uh, so timestamp and value, and then the result would would be this, right? Where just you, now you, it's just JSON payload, and it specify if it's an non, anomaly or not. So let's try to run it with this data set. If I hit continue, see now every what it's doing, it's actually sending the this the data set from here to here. It would re, then it would detect if the last item on my list is an anomaly, and then it would notice how this one it would say anomaly is true. So right now, the last item that is on that graph, it's detecting that it's not anomalous. And then uh, once it reaches this, because this is out of the ordinary, notice how this one would say true. See how it says true? And then now it goes back to false. So it's sending these, these data set. Of course, you can play with this, um, you know, detecting window. Uh, there's some parameters that you can uh, you can identify and increase the sensitivity. Uh, you can also, uh, detect, like in this case, you can say it, it you need, you know, max detecting window, the number of items or historical points that you need to send before it starts processing them. So that's that's a good way to to kind of understand. And of course, if it has seasonality, let's see if it'll, so this one have a little bit of seasonality. You can um, do that too. So it's trying to identify the patterns. And notice how on this graph, it kind of gives you the possible uh, values or ranges of values where it needs to be. OK. So let me go back to the other screen. So what I have here, let's see if I can, um, I have a Raspberry Pi here. And what I'm doing is I want to share, and I, I'm, I'm going to use my, my phone as a camera so that you all can see. So if you go to video.ninja, it's if you just want to use it to share your camera from your phone to your to your uh, v, uh, to your application. So let's see. It will show up here. So this is my Raspberry Pi. And actually, on that Raspberry Pi, I have another screen right here. I have this Python notebook. So on this Raspberry Pi, there is a Python notebook. I installed. Um, TypeScript, of course, JavaScript uh, node on that. And it is on my node package manager. I'm actually using this at Azure slash AI anomaly detector and then at Azure slash MS REST JS. And what I'm doing here is 
I want to use it to detect some uh, anomalies from this. So on top of my Raspberry Pi, there's some sensors. And this sensor right here, um, I will control it and, and show uh, you know, that it would, it would light up, OK? So let's get started there. So I'm, in order for me to be able to do this example right, in, in Python Notebook, I actually installed TS Lab. And this TS Lab is, um, allows you to be able to run this in Python uh, or Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, the advantage of this is I'm teaching it because I wanted to do it line by line, right? I wanted to execute this line. It says node sense hat, and I want to get the LED on my Raspberry Pi, and I want to fill it with a single color, color RGB. So in this case, I wanted to all, turn all the greens on that, uh, on that um, device. I want to make it, um, so let's try it again. So if I want to experiment on it, I can, now it's, let's make it red. So now it's all red. I don't know if you can see that one. It's a little bit brighter. And then clear it. So I can control this Raspberry Pi, actually running it in my browser. So this one right here is I want to get the temperature of my Raspberry Pi. And so I did that. Uh, there's IMU that get value just to get the, uh, the temperature. And of course, it has it came with other data. And here, what I wanted to do is every minute that it runs, it would collect the timestamp. Right, I'm trying to build my uh, my data log or my uh, my list of uh, readings. Right. And I specify um, the temperature for every minute, and then it would start running. So in this case, I specify the interval every minute it wakes up, get the reading, and then and do that for the next 15 minutes. Of course, I don't want you to, to sit over here and wait for 15 minutes to, in order to get this to run. But this is my goal, right? My goal is to get a data that looks something like this. You have a timestamp and then the value. Timestamp, value, timestamp, value. And that's what we're going to send to anomaly detector, and it would give us the result. So in order to use this, I need I need few things, right? I need the app Azure slash AI anomaly detector as part of an NPM package, and then the credentials. So this one right here, okay. So I need to specify in order to call the the JavaScript library or the the, the Node library, I need to pass in two things. I need the endpoint and the key in order to to run this. And I have this in a dot config or an env file. And now that I have the key and the endpoint, I can just say anomaly detector client. I pass in the endpoint and then the, the credential. Once I have that value, and what this is very much what I'm trying to do is on that client, I want to pass in this detect last point. And this detect last point, it needs uh, it needs you know, the, the data set, right? The time series data. And then you, you, know, you have to specify uh, the, the type of data. In this case, as part of the body of what I'm passing here, I have to specify every minute. That is my granularity. And then the time series data. So those are the two things that I just need. And then. After I call it, it's doing it, it's doing it, it would give me the result. In this case, I'm parsing that JSON um, data set uh, that it returned, 
And then it says here, the last item on my list is not detected as an anomaly, which is went here. So it says run response.anomaly. And then that's, that's it. So in this case, I wanted to try something else. So this is my data set. This is the format that they're expecting. I want to replace the last item on my list to something like, you know, 132 instead of 32. I want to pass in something that would make it out of the ordinary, right? So you have your data set, 26, and, and then at the end, it was 132. So definitely the last item on my list, it is an anomaly. So this is just a, a, a way to, to showcase that if I detected the last item on my Raspberry Pi device is an anomaly, I can set the pixels to X. You see that? So that, that's, that's one way on how you would, you would uh, identify, hey, that item is anomalous or not. Cool. Let's go back to the presentation. What just happened? Of course, you know, you can do this in the Node application, but of course I want to run it line by line and kind of experiment on it. That's why I showed it to you using uh, Python Notebook, but is has a, you know, but using JavaScript library or job Node application in the back end to run it. But what we did was to, you know, install these uh, node package for anomaly detector, that is an SDK that is available, and we pass in you know, the, the credentials that it needs in order to call that API, and then we, we call it through that um, IoT device, and it gave us the result. So where can you use this anomaly detector? You can use it in C-sharp, JavaScript, Python. You can even integrate it as a Docker container. Uh, running it on a specific device. So if you want to run it at the edge, you can package it, the whole system itself. It does not have to, to connect to the cloud. You can, you can, it's, it can be containerized and also shipped uh, at the edge. Uh, or at, you know, I think on a Raspberry Pi, it would run that thing. All, all you need is the key. Uh, and, it, and it occasionally had to connect and that's how it knows how much it would bill. But it can run without being on, without connection to the internet, or occasionally connected. You can integrate this with Power BI, and there's also a way you can um, do, integrate it with Azure Databricks for streaming data. There is also another service that might be useful for you, is the, for, uh, it's called Metrics Advisor. It's also part of the Azure Cognitive Services, uh, but it's specifically for data monitoring for time series data. It automates applying the, the models. The, the cool thing about this Metrics Advisor is that you can, um, there's a web portal that you can collect these time series data. It has a way you can connect it to a SQL database or a Kafka or to uh, any of the Azure data streams. Uh, and then you can detect anomalies based from that, and then you can send the alerts. So you can use this to just to monitor your data and then have root cause analysis. Um, so if you want to, you know, without, without even programming, it's, it's, it's a portal in the platform that might be available if you're gonna, if you're gonna, if you're gonna need it for uh, incident alerts. A uh, multivariate anomaly detector is also available now. It's in preview. Uh, so if you want to have multiple, like I said, multiple uh, criteria or multiple streams, data streams that you want to monitor to identify uh, anomalies, you can do that. It can, you can actually pass in up to 300 different signals. And, you know, at the end of the day, you're trying to detect this certain area right here, it's out of the ordinary as compared to the other ones. So that is one way you can, you can use it. 
if you have something more complex. All right. So the best superpower that you can give to your project is really this spidey sense, this anomaly detector. If you, if it become the, the system becomes proactive before it, be, you know, before you have any issues, you can easily identify uh, what's going on uh, when things happen. If you are interested in learning more about what I did demo today, I, and also the slides, uh, I have the uh, the GitHub. It is on GitHub. And if you're interested in learning more about me, my name is Ron Dagdag. I'm a director of software engineering, an AI edge spe specialist. I'm a Microsoft MVP. The best way to contact me is through Twitter and LinkedIn, uh, if you can connect me through LinkedIn. And I appreciate you geeking out with me about Spidey senses, about Spider-Man, anomaly detection. And now that you got bitten off by this virtual spider, feel free to try this anomaly detector system. Thank you very much. I know it's not an easy topic to talk about. A lot of us are not data scientists. Are there any questions out there that, you, that you're interested in learning? Yes, sir. Yeah, so fraud, fraud detection is a good example of this, but of course, most likely you would use multivariate. You're not just gonna use just one variable for this, but you can use this for like sales report, right? You can use it for anything that's time series, or let's say you're, you know, you're log and you're, specif you know, you're reading some values, and anything that's, that has a single value, you can easily use it. For the univariate one, you, it needs some training. Uh, there's, it's a little bit complex in how you would, you would do the training for the univariate, but you would have to give it uh, some sample data uh, so that it can learn because you're looking at multiple variables. And then once it knows that, then you can start using it for this. Yeah. Cool. Anything else? Is it that this is interesting stuff, right? It's out of the ordinary. And uh, what got me interested in this, because a lot of us, we, you know, how we, we would use this is, let's say you have, on your, you, know, you can connect this to your, your database, or you can connect this to your, you know, your sample. You can actually graph you know, which one is anomalous or not, and then it, you can include it in the reports that you're building, right? So to make reports more interesting, and also at the same time, it, it, since it, automatically learns from the data uh, that you're, you're sending it with, it, you know, it's easy enough not to, you know, just to try it out and see how it, it can be useful for your business. Cool, thank you very much, appreciate it.